Let's talk May 2025 update. So in the video shortly, I'll run through all these different options as I'm running through Facilitator. So I just want to take you through what you need to do for Facilitator. So, to set up Facilitator, uh, first of all, um, obviously you've got Teams and you've got it in Teams Rooms. So it's for unscheduled, impromptu, ad hoc discussions, as you'll see in the video. I recorded that. What you need to do to have it set up. So you can actually set up for scheduled meetings, uh, so you can enable that toggle as well. But also you must have a co-pilot license uh, and be in Microsoft Teams Public Preview as well. You must have loop components turned on as well. So yeah, I'll put this link in the video description. And you can actually add it to scheduled meetings as well. Uh, and you'll get that little icon as you see, in, either on a controller or on the device, to, to show the notes on the screen. So for ad hoc meetings, you can obviously do that as well. And you saw that, you'll see that in the video. This isn't the UI you see in the Microsoft Teams and Android. This is obviously a Windows UI. Um, but as you saw on the Android device, you just hit the facilitator icon, scan the QR code, and away you go. You'll see this on my phone, how we deal with the facilitator and how you access the notes afterwards. So we'll go back to that in a second. And then some FAQs are on here. So how do you access it? So let's go back to this chat. So this, you'll see in the video, uh, I've done uh, note taking and let's go back here this morning. So you can see seven tasks. So I can go and view recap. So these are the loop components that were recorded during the session. So you can see it's actually transcribed nearly everything. <laughs> and actually, um, here you go, my follow-up task is to make a video. Um, so yeah, you know, 14th of May. Uh, so I have a look at the notes. Here are the meeting notes. Strange that the follow-up task didn't go in there. Not sure why or how that is done. Or uh, maybe I have to assign it manually at a task, no? Okay. So you'll see that that didn't turn out as expected, but it's here in the notes and I can see the mentions. I didn't find the mention. I did say Acro and Walsh. So that is your meeting notes and everything that was covered in the meeting. So that's how you access it afterwards the session. You just go back in and you look at it. So it's in the chat there. So it's, it's there, you know, it reminds you here as an activity as well that you've got everything on there so it's pretty cool I do like it it's a nice feature to add your meetings so everything is note taken now obviously there is a transcript so when you do turn on transcripts that is obviously something you need to consider again if you want to do a scheduled call so let's do a new call demo and I'll invite the great room again so now it's got uh, obviously a teams meeting I want to look at the meeting options so this is where you can add facilitator to the meeting and you can enable that. So that will apply it by default. So now this facilitator demo will have that turned on by default and I'll send that invite. So what that means is when I start this call, facilitator will be enabled. So then at the end of the video, you will see this in action. I will jump back to there and we'll see Facilitator as part of the real life demo as well. There is now this device code flow or DCF authentication. So if you have migrated to AOSP and you're running Intune and Authenticator on your devices, this will apply by default. No Intune policy required, it will hit your device. If you're running company portal still, then it's not applicable, but uh, during Microsoft's, uh, back in February I think it was, they released this blog on how to enhanced security. So there's been some phishing attempts to use that Microsoft.com for such device login, dupe in and give you that code so they can gain authentication to devices or other applications. So device code flows across device authentication. So I sign in on my laptop and it passes that token to the device, for example. But this can also be used for websites. So I've seen it in other use cases. So it is actually quite a security risk. So hence why starting in February, They'll be rolling out these policies. So it hasn't hit any of my tenants yet. I don't see it. Um, but it will be moved to an on state as well. So what you need to do is look at how you uh, achieve this and make sure that your devices are allowed to do it if you want to do it. So let's look at our conditional access policies. 
So you'll see in here, uh, it's a Microsoft Managed Policy. So it's default, and we can go to Enter Condition Access and then Policies. So we'll see it here. So device code flow, here we go. This policy blocks where a user initiates the authentication on one device and completes it on another. The token is sent back to the original device. So that's where you use the non-digit code, microsoft.com forward slash device login, and then that passes that token across. So they want to make this a bit more secure. So how do we look at it and see it? So we go to conditional access. So here's a policy. Let me just get rid of this one and we'll do it again. So this is where it's good practice, where you can either use a location, it's already gone, uh, you can use a location, um, a device filter, dynamic security group, for example. We can, let's take a look at today. What, what happens today if I sign in a Kiwi, doesn't matter, and cloud app, register a joint device on Android, the DCF, what if? Brilliant, no policies are affected. So you see I've got no policies in place and so nothing will apply. Now, let's go through and create this policy. So DCF, for example, users and groups. Let's say I want to apply it to one user. So let's try that. Let's say Kiwi Room, just to, as an example to show you. So I want to know, I could also use cloud apps. So this is like Teams, etc. So we'll leave that there, conditions, and authentication flows I want to on for device code flow. And grant, I obviously want to block it if it's there. So let's turn it on for this Kiwi room. So now if I do what if, let's find the Kiwi room, select that, client type, well, cloud app, DCF, what if. So it's now going to hit that. Because this device uh, is in the policy, it's going to hit it. So obviously I need to make sure that is excluded, so it can then allow it. So there are some other good blogs out there. So we saw this is the tech community blog, the overview. But there's a great blog here by Jeff Bart. Again, looking at the best practices, how you set up device code flow. Again, taking you through these options here. Again, you can see my what if has changed. This is the key one. You will see this if you hit this and try and sign in with a device. It looks like it all goes through and you'll get this on your Teams device controller or front of room display if you try that one to say it's blocked. So that's how you know when you've hit device code flow. And obviously you'll see it in the logs as well. It's a condition access policy. So many different ways to do it. You can do it through a device filter. Is it compliant? Um, location based? many different ways you can create a policy but obviously you want to get a successful sign-in so this is device code flow do not ignore it um, because it is going to come and hit you and that is it that's the update for the may update for teams rooms on android speaker recognition we'll do a separate video on that one with more colleagues so you can get a better context for that one so let's have a look and see what we've got in the May release of Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android. First things you'll notice here, we have a new button, Facilitator. So this will be pushed out to all devices. So I have my neat board here, all in one device. On my neat pad, it's here. So what you'll see is when I press that, it will take you to a new QR code. So the front of room display doesn't change. This QR code is for proximity join. The Facilitator QR code is for your Users inside your organization, a user coming into your meeting room cannot scan that code. They must be on your tenant where this device is signed in. So uh, start a new meeting and get AI generated notes for everyone. The notes will be saved to your OneDrive. So this is this person starting the call. And the person starting the call must have a co-pilot license. So their 365 license, their Teams license, and a co-pilot license. Facilitator having just Teams Premium is not enough. Teams Premium is where we can do some other features like meeting recap, etc. Copilot does that, but it also does more. So let me show you what happens if someone is on the wrong tenant. So I scan my QR code. You're outside the organization. Let's go to the correct tenant, or I'm inside the org now. So let's start facilitator. So We'll scan the QR code in the correct tenant. So now it's setting up your meeting. 
And then I'm going to invite this room to the call. So now you can see it's created these loop components here for me. It's uh, telling me I can leave the meeting. I don't need to have my phone in the call as well. So here we have the uh, meeting notes, as you can see now here on the right hand side. So it's now listening to all my voices, what's happening in the meeting room. So I can either leave it from here. So now you can see full screen what's happening. So it will take about five minutes to generate these notes. And what we're going to see here is, so let's bring up the release notes, aka.ms Teams room. So let's have a quick look at the release notes. So I actually speak into the uh, platform so you can actually see what's happening. So let's go table of contents and then release notes, Teams room's release notes and Android. So May. So we have preview facilitator agent note taking in rooms for offline and ad hoc discussion. So this is where we jump in a room. We want to take some, have a quick session. And I don't have my notepad. I don't have my laptop with me, but I've got my cell phone mobile. I can scan the QR code on the front of room display. And facilitator can be our note taker in this meeting. So power your ad hoc in-person discussions by inviting facilitator agent to your team's rooms. Learn more, so that's basically saying how to set up, so we'll go through that in a bit. So let's see what else is new in this May release. So new managed policy to help further secure your tenants against potential threats to accounts using device code flow, DCF. So I'll take you through DCF and what needs to be done there as well. Disable auto accept for tenant nudges. So Teams, Rooms and Android will, will now also no longer automatically accept any proximity join using an external account. So if I'm a guest walking into this meeting room and I scan the first QR code in the top left, this will now not allow me, well, allow me to join the meeting, but I have to accept on the device. So either on a controller or on the front of room display, if it's a touch board, I can then simply hit accept. So previously it was auto answer. Now there's, you have to manually accept it. So an extra layer of security there. Local PTZ controls. If the camera is not currently using auto frame in the room, in-room users can control with PTC of the active camera to keep focus when they want to. So let's have a look. We can do that here. We go into the camera. So here we have manual PTC. So if I go enhance framing, you can see a room active speaker, and then I can now go to manual PTC. So I can zoom, zoom in, etc., and then do that reset and then turn back on auto framing. So that's now available in the update. So whether you're doing it on a controller or you're doing it on a board, you can then do that. What else do we have? Speaker recognition and attribution in Teams meeting. So being able to Teams rooms and Android will soon support intelligent speakers, providing advanced speaker recognition to clearly identify who said what in a meeting transcript. This feature significantly enhances Microsoft 365 Copilot and AI Recap. So the AI Recap is part of Teams Premium, but you also get it in Copilot as well, enabling accurate personalized summaries and actual insights from your meetings. This capability seamlessly integrates with both intelligent speakers and your existing room speakers via the cloud. So this is previously, this required a special microphone puck, speaker puck. It was called intelligent speaker, where I had like, something like five or seven microphones in the actual device. Now it's all processed in the cloud, so it's called single channel audio, essentially. So we can record ourselves, and then we'll show you that in our Teams client, how you record your voice, and then it'll recognize people. And then you can identify people as well. Once you walk in the room, you have everyone set up. It will then have speaker one, speaker two, if they don't know that voice. Each participant is securely recognized with a unique voice profile, ensuring precise attribution in live transcripts, maximizing the effectiveness of your Teams meeting. So this is really for scheduled calls. So when you're in a call, it will then take notes of everything on there. So proximity joint improvements and reliability improvements, these enhancements are for standalone consoles where the calls used to drop sometimes and then rejoin us massively a few seconds later. Not seeing those issues, but okay. Call join performance, multiple improvements of call join performance and standalone consoles. What's a standalone console? When we have a console, Standalone console, maybe one on one, not sure. These improvements should significantly reduce the time it takes for the console to join the meeting, especially when the ones on more than 50 participants. Okay, so this has been an issue with large meetings. So they're talking about the console, where it was a little bit behind 
the front of room. So the front of room device would join the call, and then a few seconds later the console would then join as well. So now that's improved. So let's look at our meeting transcript. So Graham discusses new features of inviting facilitator our agent to take notes in Teams rooms and ad hoc discussions. Brilliant. New managed policy for secure attendance. So this is listening to everything in the room now. So now we have follow-up tasks. So create video of May update, assign that to Graham Walsh, and I want it done by the 14th of May. So that's going to be creating the video, and this will be now written into the loop component shortly. Um, and again, when you're doing things with AI, you'll always see at the top, AI generated content in notes may be incorrect. So this is just really saying you must check your homework or check facilitators homework. So being able to see all the information in here. But also now if I go into my, into my Teams client, I can actually see the notes as well. So you can see it's live and ongoing. And if I have this open, obviously facilitator is saying, I'm here to assist with the meeting, take notes during live meetings, actually to halfway point, and answer any questions in the chat, just mention, so at facilitator. And then this will, you know, take all your notes. So that's a wrap up of what we have in facilitator and in the latest update for May. This is now available in Teams Admin Center, so you can push it out to your devices. And once we end the call, We've obviously stopped it there. And then you can see here now my client. I've got the attendance. You can see he was in the call. How long it was, average attendance time. This is the grape room. And then see who was invited. And I look at apps. Let's look at recap. So here we go. So you can see all the notes there that were on the screen are in here. Produce obviously an AI summary. So that's take a while. Any mentions, any content that was shared and obviously the full transcript. So. There is a full transcript of everything on there. So brilliant, it's got all my notes. So I don't have to take a notebook to a meeting room again. I can use things like facilitators to help me do that. And then everything is captured in one. Any questions, let me know.